Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to turn this average looking website into this beautiful looking website by just using a basic design system. Let's get started. All right, so as you can see, I've set up a very bare bones Next.js web app here. It pretty much has the layout of the website that I want to create, basically a personal portfolio right now. But as you can probably tell, it looks kind of bland. So it's up to us now to style this up all via design systems. First things first, before we can even start thinking about code, we need some design inspiration. So naturally, I turn to the most reliable resource on the internet, Twitter. But then I remembered, no one reads my tweets. So thankfully, some people actually get responses to their tweets. I know, what a concept. So I went scouring across Twitter to find out what people were saying were the best websites. One website in specific, kept coming up linear holy moly guys look at this website wow look at these animations holy cow this is one of the greatest webs oh my god did you guys see that that's the that's straight magic right there wow guys i'm pretty speechless i think we have our inspiration all right now back to our web app here we have to turn this into something that looks like linear. Let's give it a shot. Just a quick little note, all of the code that I'll be working on for the remainder of the video will be linked in the description. So if you're trying to try it out for yourself or follow along, please go check out our repository and give us a start. Let's get to the fun part, coding. Before we even get coding, we gotta add some libraries so that we don't have to write all of our code from scratch because who wants to do that? I'm gonna go ahead and add Chakra UI. Chakra UI provides this wonderful and vast component library that we can leverage our own design system on so we don't have to implement things like buttons or inputs from scratch. So I'm gonna go ahead and install Chakra UI here and all their related dependencies. And once that's done, we have to go back into our code and implement a few basic boilerplate code so that we can use Chakra. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop into our code base here. So the first thing we need to do is actually just wrap everything with our chakra provider. The chakra provider is basically just a React context that passes down all of our themes to the entire app. So before we dive even deeper into creating Linear's theme, we have one last bit of housekeeping to do. I'm gonna go ahead and install this package called Mirrorful. Mirrorful is an open source project that provides all the infrastructure you would ever need as a developer to manage your theme in a scalable way. Now that we have the Mirrorful package installed, I'm gonna go ahead and run the visual editor so that we can set up our theme properly. And I can do so by running yarn run Mirrorful. So now that we're inside of Mirrorful's visual theme editor, we can go ahead and define our colors here once and for all so we never ever have to go hunting for that hex code in our code. This should really help enforce the consistency and look and feel of our UI. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by adding a new color here. Because we're mimicking linear, and if I remember correctly, it's this beautiful purple, we'll go ahead and copy some of their colors here. So we're just gonna go ahead and name this purple here. This variable name is essentially how we're gonna reference this color in code. So it doesn't need to be anything too fancy. In fact, simpler is probably better given that this is basically a variable name. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the hex color for this. Um, I went ahead and searched it up ahead of time. It happens to be this hex color right here. Go ahead and put that in here. I'm gonna go ahead and add this color. And boom, we've added our first color to our color palette. It looks pretty good if I do say so myself. I'm gonna go ahead and add a few more colors that we see throughout Linear's website, just so that we have these constants. So for example, I'll probably grab this like light greenish here, and maybe as well as this dark background color, as well as potentially like a light gray here as kind of a neutral color. All right, I've gone ahead and added three other colors here, a blue, a background, and a gray as our color palette. This should be enough to get us going, but we can always come back and add more. It's super duper easy with Mirrorful, which is why I love using it. The last thing we now need to do with Mirrorful is export the configuration so that we can consume it inside of our code base. I'm gonna go ahead and click this export config button 
and you'll see that we're now ready to use our brand new tokens. You'll now see that Mirrorful lets us import this constant called tokens. Tokens effectively symbolize all of these colors that we just defined and all the different variations that we can use these colors as. So let's go ahead and hop back into our code and let's see how we can use these tokens. All right, we're back in the code base now, back at our Chakra provider. With Chakra, in order to apply our own custom styles, we'll want to define a custom theme object. We'll want to import this thing called extend theme. With extend theme, we'll be able to basically create our own custom theme object without too much hassle. With this new theme variable that we create, we'll want to just go ahead and pass it in to our Chakra provider. This is effectively telling Chakra that, hey, we actually are bringing our own theme here. So use this instead of the default values. Now that we have our own theme with Chakra, we'll want to go ahead and now inject all of the tokens that we just created with Mirrorful. So you'll now actually see in this left-hand sidebar that there's this brand new .mirrorful folder. We can take a peek inside of it to see what's going on, but we'll see that, for example, if we look inside of theme.ts, it's just this big config object that now has all of our colors that we can now easily use within our project. So now I'll just go ahead and import that tokens object that we were just looking at and as Mirrorful was telling us to do so earlier, once we find our Mirrorful folder and we can just grab it from our theme file. Amazing. So now that we have this tokens object here, we can go ahead and inject all of these colors into our chakra theme. We can do so by just simply redefining our colors. So for example, we know that we have a purple. So all we need to do now is just pass in our purple token. And we're gonna go ahead and pass in this shades object, which all it is is just a bunch of different variations of the same color. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of them. And that's the beauty of Mirrorful, right? We don't have to worry at all about generating all these shades or what color this is. All we need to worry about is we are using purple and we know that Chakra and Mirrorful will handle the rest of it for us. So as you can see here, things have actually slightly changed since we last looked at it. Chakra actually overrides some of the default styles. So you'll see now that the button kind of just looks like normal text. Reminder that our end goal here is to end up with a button that looks like this. And this is what our button currently looks like aka horrible. In fact, you can't even tell it's a button. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is componentize all of my buttons. The beauty of React is being able to create components that are reusable throughout your whole app. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually just create a new folder here called components. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new component called button.tsx. We're going to go ahead and write a little bit of boilerplate here by defining our function, import the default button component from Chakra. Now it's generally good to base yourself off of these component libraries. These component libraries cover a lot of things that you normally wouldn't think about as a developer. So before we even continue here, we're also, we also know that we want to pass in like a label, um, which will basically just be the text on it. So we can go ahead and do this, for example, we can pass it in as a prop um, and we can go ahead and render that here. Comment this out for now and go ahead and put in our brand new button here. Amazing. And looks like Copilot got it right this time where we'll go ahead and put in our label as email me. And let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. Okay. So now I see that we have this button that actually kind of looks like a button, but it blends right into the background. So let's add, let's go ahead and add some color and make it look like that classic pill shape that we see on Linear's website. After coding for a little bit, here's where I got to. I ended up setting the border radius to 30 pixel to achieve that linear like pill shape button. I also set the background gradient to this linear gradient that goes from blue to purple. And on hover, I added that linear classic effect where that box shadow pops up from behind the button. So as you can see now, I have this pretty good looking button and when I hover over it, it has that cool like little background effect. All right, now that we got our button, I'm looking at this site and something just doesn't look quite right. And I think I know what it is. 
I think it's that we're not dark mode yet. And as a developer, that really makes such a big difference. So before anything else, let's go ahead and add dark mode just like linear. We're back now at our chakra provider where we define our custom theme. So inside of our custom theme now, we can go ahead and add a few more objects here that basically go ahead and let us define any global styles we want to apply. So in this example, we we'll wanna go ahead and set the background color to one of our original tokens background. And this is why, again, Miraful is so amazing, in my opinion, to start with, because now we have all of these colors immediately set for us, and we don't have to dig around looking for hex colors left and right. So now if we go back to our app, hopefully we should see that it is now this beautiful dark color. And immediately I can tell that this button just looks so much better than what it did before. Now that we have our background in dark mode set, let's go ahead and take care of this text. So just like we did with the button, I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new custom component called heading. And here we can define our own custom heading component and replace this original header component. I will be right back once I have this done. All right, I'm back and I've updated all of the text. So I went ahead and created these two new components here. The first one is headings. So headings I designed to basically cover this linear like gradient text that has this shiny look to it. The code itself was pretty simple. I added a few variants um, and went ahead and created a very similar to what we did with the button and created a background gradient from white to basically the background color, which is kind of why it blends in a little bit at the bottom here. I also went ahead and created this text component here, um, similar to a header. However, it's just your basic paragraph component with smaller text. And here's what it looks like in the use case. Um, so you'll see that I can now just wrap with a text component define a size, and boom, we have standardized components, making our development that much faster. Now, the next big thing I wanna tackle is this card section. As you can see, this section is looking pretty empty right now. I think I wanna make it something in this kind of vibe. I don't think I'll be able to make it look as good without these cool assets, but we'll see what we can do with just text. We do have a great design system, so, let me go ahead and take a crack at this and I'll show you what I come up with. Okay, after a little bit of fiddling around, here we are with the cards. I added a little icon here to give it a little bit of flair, but obviously it would look way better if they were animated SVGs. Um, Try my best here to mimic a little bit of what these look like, but these are a little bit more transparent, a little bit more colorful, and they do have that bit of a gradient that I unfortunately don't think I can quite make look good without the necessary content. But I'm quite happy with how this looks for now. I think the last big thing I wanna add here is gonna be these drop down like lights that basically shine on the headers. Now the million dollar question is how the heck did they do this? I then wanna spend some time inspecting Element to try to reverse engineer how they did this. That is one of the beautiful things about front-end engineering is that if you see something on a website that you like, you can just inspect element and figure out exactly how they did this. So I can see in the inspect element that they're using something called conic gradients. But let's try to recreate it, copying all the CSS that I see via inspect element. So since I've been gone, I basically added this little glow effect around this little avatar using my primary purple. And of course, I went ahead and added this, what I'm now calling a stage light effect. Let's go ahead and hop into the code and I'll show you guys how I did this. So in good design system fashion, I created a new component called stage light. Now I won't dive too deep into all the technical details of how this is done, but I ended up really just copying a lot of what I saw on Linear's website. They use a radial gradient here to basically create a mask on top of another gradient. It's kind of like gradientception. We can actually break this down into a few gradients to make this more digestible. The first gradient is this big black gradient that you see right here. It's kind of like a small chunk of the edge of a circle. And there's another two gradients 
right here. So basically you can imagine as if you cut the page in half and one of these gradients is this left half and the other gradient is this right half. They're symmetrical. Now to create the animation that you're seeing here of it expanding outwards, we play around with a few of the props to either make it wider or thinner. And then we also just mess around with the colors to make it animate smoothly. Implementation wise, I'm using this library called Framer Motion. Framer Motion is great for animating. It's honestly a game changer in terms of animations. As you can see that this is actually the core of the code about how I animated this. But if you're curious to learn more, drop a comment below and maybe I'll make a separate video on how this animation works. All right, that is all I have for you guys today. I know there's still a long ways to go before this website looks as good as Linear's, but hopefully this was helpful in showing you how to set up a project so that you'll be successful down the road. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a comment and leave us a star on GitHub. Thank you guys and catch you next time.